everybody know online. All right, man. All right. Couple, you know, technical difficulties, man. But you know, <laughs> make it happen, man. That's that's just the way how how it goes, man. Strange how like it, it wouldn't open up in in the one browser there, but um, we're here now, and you know, we're we're definitely going to um, discuss a lot of important stuff. Okay. You know, it's um important stuff that that you know often doesn't really get spoken about and you know i have i have some questions <laughs> you know i got some questions but first i'm just gonna you know share um some of these links online just to make sure people um are in tuned okay Let's i'm just gonna grab I'm... something all right no worries man peace everyone if y'all are just joining us right now man this is uh the reason with logic uh podcast live session and i'm here with uh with Terry Miller, man, the legend, man. Like we're we're going to get into it, and um, I'm excited to um, have this conversation and just get in tuned, um, learn more about, um, you know, your your methods, you know, your your intentions behind like the artwork. And as you can see, man, I'm I'm lucky to to own one right here, and we're going to speak about that. <laughs> yeah, as as well as that one in the background, which I want to be collecting later too. You know, so um, I'm I'm coming for all of them, you know, because. Um, you know like like art really brings like a, a sense of um it, it's like you know what it, it reminds me of this african um word that i use a lot which is called um sankofa you know and sankofa basically translates to that it's it's not taboo to go back and collect what you may have forgotten you know so when i think of like the art pieces and all that it's just one of those like visible visual um representations and reminders of, of, our, of our history, like where we come from, and also um, a reminder of where we need to go, you know, so it's um, extremely important. But yes, so that being said, man, we're we going to get right into it, man. So um, thank you for, for for taking the time out to um, to connect. Um, I know that, um, you know, we we met um, over, over the summer, and it was, um, it, it was, it was unexpected. You know, it was um, a, a very like random connection, but um, oftentimes things, you know, happen in mysterious ways that aren't necessarily so random in, in the first place. Yeah. You know, but um, but yeah, like before I, I get into that, you know, um, want to just give, you know, just give a little introduction um, about yourself. I know that you're a, an, an artist, a visual artist. Um, you are connected to the Underground Railroad. You know, you have um, family members who literally come from that that lineage. Um, you are representing from from Owen Sound, a place that is really intriguing to me because it, it's it's a spot that you don't really hear too much about, even though there is extensive like rich history that um, exists in Owen Sound, including the longest running emancipation festival um, in North America. Mm -hmm. That is, it's mind blowing to me that it's literally older than Canada. And I, I've come to the conclusion that oftentimes we, we, we don't really know about this um, festival because it's on the same weekend as as caravana but yeah. anyways we're, we're we're definitely going to get into it but let's um you know tell me um a bit about like your like foundations in terms of like art and then we'll get into um the history um well i i've i guess uh my wife and i both believe that uh everyone's born an artist um they, they just unlearn it in school right mm -hmm. um i'm fortunate because my mother was an artist and uh, we always had a studio in our house. And um, it's just something I love doing, you know. It, um, it's my form of meditation. Like mm -hmm. I used to tell a friend of mine who's a Reiki master that uh, I can't quiet my mind enough to meditate. And she goes, <laughs> Tony, you do it every time you do a painting. <laughs> yeah, or work on your art. You're actually meditating. Absolutely. So, uh, and I, I, um, I like to tell stories, too. And um, with the projects I'm working on, like I, I do other things besides just black history. But uh, what um, inspired me was uh, when I was a kid, um, I didn't know anything about my family history. Mm. Uh, I started school and I came home and uh, I asked my mother, why do all the kids hate me? And she said, um, because we used to be slaves. And that was it. <laughs> I didn't wow. know anything else, right? Um, 
And then um, many, many years later, uh, I, I knew about this slavery existed and the horrors of it and that, but I didn't know much about my own family's connection to it until I uh, read uh, Freedom Seekers by Freedom Seekers by Dan Hill. Okay. He used to be Ontario's um, ombudsman. And then I see this picture of my great great grandfather, who's the founder of the Emancipation Picnic. And so then I start doing research. And um, I found that really fascinating. So then um, I started telling stories about it. Like um, I had an exhibition um, about the history of um, slavery to emancipation. And, you know, I included quilting codes across the mid middle crossing, stuff like that. And um, then um, that, ex that, that work, um, six of those paintings ended up being in the uh, Royal Ontario Museum for oh, a, wow. a competition. And while I was there, I ran into a good friend of mine, uh, Professor George Walker from OCA. And he ran it by me about, why don't you, why don't you do a book? You know, and um, got any ideas running by me. And so I, um, I thought, John Hall, what a perfect story, right? Like he is a, he had it all. He was a, his mother was a Zulu. His, his father was a, a Mohawk. And uh, he was a sculptor for Tecumseh during the war against the States and an interpreter. And then he gets sold into slavery. <laughs> and while he's in slavery, he meets my great, great grandfather. They're in the plantations next door. And wow. um, they uh, they both escape and end up um, growing old together in Ocean. He was the town crier. My grandfather is a town preacher. I thought that was an amazing story. So that's what kind of got the ball going. And that book ended up winning three international awards. And um, I was just shocked. <laughs> wow. But... Uh, now I'm doing. I'm working on some other projects like that book right there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when that happened, um, when I finished that book, I went up to uh, to the graveyard where he's buried, and I uh, I'm looking. At, I went and where's the stone? Where's his gravestone? Because I thought it'd be a good picture to have in the back of the book. And uh, he's in an unmarked grave, and then I find out. There's not only him, but there's a. Uh, I was wrong about that number. There was not 2,000. There's uh, about 1,500 unmarked okay. graves there. The only right upright stone there is my great great grandmother, Sarah's. Wow. <laughs> so I talked to a few people about it. And um, then the, um, a friend of mine approached me and she was doing the cemetery tour. Her name's Allie, Allie Bolton. And uh, these people approached her and offered to uh, pay for a monument out of their own pockets. Wow. So these wow. people wouldn't be forgotten. And the donors were Sher John and Shirley Rearburn. And so now that monument's there. It's wow. dedicated to all the people buried there. And uh, that was that's, really cool. Yeah, no, that that's totally like just mind blowing to me. Because again, like, you know, I, I first heard of of Owen Sound. Um, it must have been about like 2008 or so. Um, just you know, shortly after when I was starting Stolen from Africa and um, really getting more in tune with like Canadian Black history. I was more more so tapped into like Africville. You know, that was like my my go to place. And then when I heard about Owen Sound, I was like, what do you mean we got places like this in um, Ontario? unbelievable and then just learning about that like seeing like the freedom trail and i had to come up to my you know like myself to really see what was going on and and that was like my, my first introduction you know and that was like years ago and then the, the second time was um what was to visit like the same grave site that that you're um speaking about you know um i was there this summer to to visit with with the to visit a friend who who's passed um she was actually someone who um you know introduced me to like the black history of owen sound and i just couldn't believe it man shout out to kim man rest in peace and um it was really interesting because i don't know like i had this i guess it was almost like a spiritual calling in a way like i felt like i needed to come i didn't know what it was for i didn't know what but i knew that i had to and 
and it was like this like strong vibration that I just had to like, you know, like make my way out there, man. So, so shout out on men who, who really, you know, supported me out there and connected me to you. So, you know, while I was like sharing, you know, um, you know, a, a bit about my knowledge of Owen sound and like the, the history out there, um, she, um, mentioned to connect with you and she was like, Oh my gosh, you have to meet this person. And I think like, I'm not sure how you two connect, how you connected with, with Han, but it almost seemed like it was almost like random in a way as well, but maybe not. I mean, this is, you know, the stars aligning and she was just really excited. She was like, you have to meet this guy. And so, you know, we, we showed up at, at, at your spot and you're like, you know, doing, doing what you do with, 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 you know, in your garage, like, you know, putting some, you know, stuff together and whatnot. And, you know, um, this kind of leads to like my, the painting that I have, like in, in the background right here, you know, which is, um, you know, the, the burning bush, you know, and I remember just seeing a bunch of like your artwork, some including the one that's behind you right there, which I'll be collecting a bit later. Uh, <laughs> it, it really just like, like spoke to me and I'll tell you real quick, like why the burning bush, uh, painting really, um, you know, spoke, well, not just because of the colors, but also like the symbolism of it you know as we know the burning bush is a story with like moses and you know the top of the mountain and that's where he got like the spiritual downloads of like you know the, the commandments and um this crazy idea to like you know like free his people and people are just kind of like what is going on with this like where does this idea even come from you know but he's so determined and i kind of see like the burning bush as this like metaphor um, for like following that like desire. I feel like we all have like a burning bush within us. You know, I think it's the same thing that that allows you to want to create and, and you're on this mission of like preserving history and culture. And even when people may look at it and see like it's crazy, it's something that that you know you have to do. So when, when I think of like, you know, me taking this trip out to Owen Sound and connecting and even going to the grave site and then um, learning more about the history and then collecting this painting and then meeting you, I was like, okay, there's there's some work to be done. Um, mm -hmm. Especially for me, like starting an organization called Stolen from Africa, which is all about the preservation of our history. And because we know how important it is um, to have representation because it really connects with our self-esteem our sense of, of 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 each other and knowing that we have contributed to um what we call like you know the greater identity of of of, can of canada you know like oftentimes we get erased from from this narrative so yes. you know um so so connecting with you was just one of those things where um it, it just felt right I, I felt like there there's work to be done and and i know that us having these conversations is is you know to to, to keep that energy going to keep that burning bush fire going but that being said, I'm curious to know, like, uh, maybe you can give me a breakdown of like, you know, the, like how you even came up with this concept and um, the, you know, your, like your, your mindset of, at that time. What, for the burning bush painting? Yeah. Yeah. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, I just had all my paints out there and I started working. And then um, a lot of times when I work, Neil, um, it's intuitive. Mm. I don't plan it out it'll just happen. And, uh, that was one of my intuitive pieces where, um, I, I've read the Bible a lot and, um, it just kind of happened. Like I was thinking Northern Africa, um, um, the, uh, Israelites escaped bondage and all that. And that's what happened. <laughs> Simple as that. So, yeah. But it, it it it's almost like you you too got this like spiritual download. So when you say like intuitive, you know, I, I really feel that that's like our way. I call it like nature's Wi-Fi. You know, it, yeah. that, that's 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 <laughs> where where it comes from. It's the original Wi-Fi. Like you know, and it's one of those reminders where where you're you're connected. Yeah. It happens to me, and uh, you know, even uh, when I go up to that Potter's Field, or um, I can feel my ancestors' presence there. Indeed. I sense them and I, I sense that they're happy with what I'm doing here, like to remember them, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's my, it's my duty and it's my desire to, to keep them people alive. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, real quick, I, I want to kind of go back to like, you know, the emancipation, um, you know, festival picnic that has um, literally existed older than like the, I guess, I don't know, call it like the uh, creation of Canada, you know, yeah. um, uh, at least like from the in incorporated side, um, you know, and to also add to the fact that, 
this year, uh, 2021, is the first year that Canada has nationally recognized Emancipation Day. Can you speak? Really? About time, eh? (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm so baffled and confused. Um, I'm just curious to know, like, 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 what was that process like, if you're aware, and, and what does that mean to you? Um, I, I wasn't really involved with making that happen, but I think it's a really good thing. Okay. Um, like I'm, pro- I'm probably a lot older than you, but when I was growing up, there is nothing to recognize the black community happening mm. or the black history around here. It's nothing. Right. So I didn't know about, um, black explorers or inventors or, or, um, in, you know, there's nothing. And, or in, um, even what part we played in the history of Canada. Right. Like I, two weeks ago, I'm up at the um, Negro Creek Road and I find my uh, great, great grandfather's farm. Wow. Thomas Henry Miller and him and his father and mother and brothers and sisters, they cleared that land. Wow. And just to see that and think that they walked right where I'm walking. Wow. You know, and uh, I'm the, I'm his hopes and dreams come alive. I am the living embodiment of what he wanted for his children to have. So it was kind of, uh, it was almost, I almost got choked up, you know. Mm. Absolutely. So yeah, so it's come a long way. Yeah, long way to go, but a long way. It's come. It's come a long way. Indeed, and and this is why it's so important to have these conversations and and to preserve this this history for like future generations to know that yes, like we we have been here, and we have contributed to Canadian identity, like regardless of what like the history books show or or what's like you know not being taught in schools. Um, I, I really do feel that it's really up to us to you know take the lead on that. Well, and, you don't and do it, who else is gonna, you know? <laughs> well, I, absolutely. I, I mean, like, we're, we're just learning about, like, like, the Colored Hockey League and whatnot. Like, you know, like, they just mm-hmm. got, like, recognized. And it's still not even recognized um, officially by the NHL. You know, oh, like, yeah. our history is here. Like, you know, when, when we think of hockey, and, and I'm pretty sure you may have had similar experiences. Like, when I grew up, I loved hockey. You know, like, skating is what we do, man. We're, we're Canadian, you know? But... Um, it got to a point where, you know, um, I felt like I was not entitled or allowed to play because I wasn't white. At least that's what people told me. Yeah. But if I knew that we had a role in in the development of, of hockey and and we had significant presence and we even brought some flavor to hockey, you know, like when we <laughs> see the slap shot and the fast paced hockey like that came from the Colored Hockey League, um, it, it, it may have you know, I may have taken a different route. You know, I would have walked with my head up a little high, a little more confidence and said, hold on. No, like this is our sport too. You know, so I'm curious to know if you had any experience like that growing up. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not very sports minded, <laughs> but uh, um, I was usually uh, one of the few black kids in the art, in art programs, like uh, where I first studied art, I was the only black kid in the art program and, when I went to OCA, there was probably three of us in the whole school, if that. Mm. And um, but I've had some crazy racist shit said to me. Like, uh, I had this woman come up to me because she I was having a show in London, Ontario, and she come up and uh, accused me of being racist because I paint black people. <laughs> Tell me about that. I go, I'm not a racist. I I paint what I know. <laughs> He's Rembrandt of being a white supremacist. <laughs> like, wow. It's crazy. Last yeah. time, well, the only um, few times I've had racism is when somebody doesn't agree. Some people haven't agreed with the subject matter I, I choose sometimes, but I usually write that off as ignorance, you know, well, being sick. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, the way how I see it is like art is supposed to like in, invoke emotions and, and yeah, it's supposed to like make you uncomfortable at times. And, and I think like if it does, then that might be something to like unpack or explore um, mm-hmm. as opposed to being reactionary and and projecting on you 
You know, it's, it's really more about like, okay, there's something internal that maybe this person needs to like explore and unpack and, and, you know, kind of, kind of face, Yeah. you know, because, well, um, yeah. You know, the old saying, if one's point fingers pointing at you, you get three point back. Well, but there we go. Probably yeah. hers, the races. <laughs> of, of course. I mean, she, because it, it it's triggering, you know, it's, um, you, you're, you're creating artwork that, that is, is a reminder and I truly believe that that's what art is for. It, it's for for us to to remember, and and maybe to like, you know, um, to heal as well. You know, like sure. um, what 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 does um, art and healing mean to you? Oh, it's it saved my life so many times, Neil. You know, like speak uh, on it, brother. Speak on it. Well, for me, um, I um I've had issues with uh, mental illness, for instance, where. Um, the only thing that was holding me together is my, my work, mm. you know, it, it would, uh, I'd create my own world with my paintings or my drawings or whatever, and give my, my brain a chance to get its shit together, you know, mm. so it's very healing to me. Um, all the time I always have, a. anytime I'm going to somewhere peaceful and that I love or everything, my sketchbook's with me. You know, mm. it's just part of who I am, you know, it's, but, um, yeah, it's very, uh, art, art can heal. Um, it, a lot of major, all the major institutes, um, the state psychiatric institutes or whatever, they always have art programs for patients to, to be able to express themselves if they can't do it verbally. And even, mm. um, there's even, uh, art therapy for children. So they can express yep. what they feel and, and solve issues. So yeah, it's it can heal. Art can heal. Yeah. Now now speaking of, of, of healing, um, I remember when um you know I was in Owen Sound and you know we're in your garage and and you just kind of like like casually mentioned about like surviving like cancer like like twice. And and I'm curious to know like you know the aspect of, of healing in that capacity because if correct me if i'm wrong but you mentioned that there was no um like chemo and this was a, a lot of of like having you know deliberate intentions like a, a lot of like mental energy like like you were really it, it seemed like you were getting help from other realms oh i was no doubt <laughs> no doubt at all no um yeah. um People, if you're watching this, I'm not. I'm not saying don't get chemo and don't get radiation. It just wasn't right for me. Um, what I did is um, the first time I uh, found out I, I had lung cancer, I, I, I got in her car and I looked at my wife and uh, I started to get upset. And she goes, "Tom, don't even go there. We're gonna beat it. <laughs> mm. I'll give you two days to be depressed, and after that, we're going to attack it." So, um, right after that, I, I started, um, every day I'd play all my favorite comedians. I would, uh, I'd put all my happy music on. I wouldn't allow any, um, any crap thinking or images around me. I got two friends who are Reiki masters. They start working on me and, uh, I dance every day <laughs> and, uh, Every night, my wife and I would, excuse me, we, we knew where it was. So we'd both put our hands over there and focus on it shrinking. Mm. And it did. <laughs> wow. And then they, they had the surgically remove it, but I was out the next day. Wow. And uh, same thing with my, uh, when I had it in my mouth, um, I wasn't even worried about it. And so then they started trying to get me the chemo radiation. I totally refused. Uh, they had a whole team of them trying to uh, pressure me into it. Hmm. And we kept saying, no, no, no. Because if I did it, I would have lost my teeth, my right. taste buds, and part of my jawbone. Wow. And the guy, who, the surgeon who took it out said, it's gone. <laughs> I said, I'll take my, chan I'll take my chances. Wow. <laughs> hmm. So I took my chances, and I still got all my teeth and uh, my taste buds and stuff, and it hasn't come back. Mm. So, wow that's 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 incredible um if i, I, I might bought, if I bought into those guys i would be wearing dentures right now wow 
it's incredible, you know, that that you just had this this knowing and, and shout out to your wife as well, you know, for for supporting you in that that capacity and just um you know, like this kind of goes back to like like the the burning bush, you know, like metaphor. Like there was some type of like burning desire within, even though like outside, you know, perspectives just it didn't make sense, but it made sense to you and and your and your wife. And and I really believe, well, something that's become really more present these days is like the power of, of intention yes. and, and the thought. You know, um it because when I started really understanding the power of intention, it makes sense when you know, like the, the power of, of prayer or, or, or when I think about, you know, when, when you're cooking food and people say, oh, this, this food was made with love, you know, like yeah. there's the intention that goes into it, you know, and, and that's what you're experiencing. So it's kind of like a, a tangible way of explaining like, like the spiritual connection. Cause I know sometimes that's hard for people to, to really grasp. It's like, well, what do you mean? You just pray. And then things happen. It's like, well, it's not just praying. It's it's like the intention, and like you said, um, I, I myself, I, I've uh, I'm I'm a what do you call it? Um, I've done my, my Reiki level one, so I'm I'm familiar with with Reiki and and just like how you mentioned, like you know, putting your your hand like you know in the I guess area of, of concern and actually visualizing like you know like like shrinking and sending like energy intentionally to that spot. Um, I, I really believe that that does have um, significant um impacts you know yeah. but like you said like you know the, this this is not to like you know dismiss like western ways and and you know because I, I do believe that has its place but at the same time like i think us as as human beings we're um a lot more powerful than than we think you know and yeah. and and exactly like like how you mentioned it in the car like your your wife was just like yo shut out the the doubt because that's the mm -hmm. beginning of it as soon as yeah. you start doubting you're bringing energy to that thought the negative energy, yeah. You Absolutely. know, I um, I'm a super strong believer that thoughts create reality, mm. big time. Like, uh, for instance, we we call our studio Bliss Studio. Talk about and, that. And I told you about that. Tell tell, tell the story of like how, oh. how you got the name and whatnot. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was in uh, Costa Rica uh, with Lorraine, and um, we were dating at the time. And I was talking to her about Joseph Campbell and. He's a, a philosopher and sociologist who had a theory uh, to be true to your life, you should do what brings you joy every day. You should follow your bliss. Hmm. And uh, I said to her, what would your bliss be? And she said, uh, to live with you near the water and do art. Like, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, when I said that to her, I picked up a black stone with two white circles in it. And three months later, we found an awesome... Uh, barn on the shores of lake huron okay and uh we called it bliss studios <laughs> and then a friend of mine finds another stone just like it on that beach wow <laughs> just saying man and so all that energy people always were referring to Lorraine and i as the bliss people so they keep giving mm. us that positive energy when they talk to us uh, well, I mean, that's, that's like the, and, and I, I can speak to that because that's like the energy that I, I felt like just being in your space, like, you know, like with all your artwork and just your energy and, and, and you have a beautiful like home, like, you know, I just like your backyard and just everything is just, it, it does have like a, a bliss kind of, kind of vibe, you know, really chill, relax, like, you know, artistic, creative, you know, spiritual, like, like all of those elements are, are definitely like presence, you know, so. Oh, yeah, I, I can tell that all those elements are are important to you, you know. Um, so, like, speaking of, like, you know, I guess art, um, I see some of the, the you know, um, images in the background. Now, now the one that I, I've claimed right there, which which I see, like, you want to you wanna speak a little bit to, to that real quick? Oh, uh, this one here. Let me see if I can get a better picture of it for you. Um, I'm really bad at the camera. <laughs> Close to it. Let me see. It's all good. Yeah, there this, we go. That's the one. This is uh, Thomas. This is uh, Daddy Hall when he first arrived the Blue Mountains up here, the Great Highlands, mm. when he escaped slavery. Mm. And uh, the trees in that are actually image tree uh, landscape images from right around where I live here. Mm. Yeah, love the colors. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, I enjoyed what, doing that one. 
Yeah, like what was that one kind of like one of those like intuitive ones, or was that like intentional? Um, like, you... I wish it was. It actually took me quite a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it started out intuitive, and then I started getting too detailed. But uh, no, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and, and I guess like find interesting. Uh, yeah, and this? I guess like like him like you know kind of looking um you know it's almost like he's like kind of like fading into like the forest and whatnot like what was like yeah. i guess the intentions or the messages that that you're trying to capture in that image yeah that's the blue bones and uh this one here that's uh okay this <laughs> is there we go yeah <laughs> this is mary it. taylor okay talk about mary taylor amazing woman she's one of the people i'm uh I'm doing for the Potter's Field project. And uh, she was an escaped slave who lived here uh, in the 1800s, of course. Right. And she made her living uh, selling apple pies wow. and uh, and wrestling men for money. <laughs> 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 and uh, okay. she's a little popular okay. figure. And for, for bad luck, her house burnt down. And she was forced to go live in the jail here. And a oh, week wow. after she got in there, she died. My and goodness. And she's in an unmarked grave there in uh, Potter's Field. Wow. <laughs> okay, then. Well, we, 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 we got we to gotta find her, man, and, and <laughs> yeah, make, I gotta, make those connections. I'm not going to I'm not gonna force you to look at everything, but there's one more. There's one more here I think is really important. See this one okay. behind me here? Yeah. Yeah, speak to that one. This is called the Reed Sisters. And it's it's this is tragic. They're in Potter's Field too. There's four sisters, and within a year, all four of them died. Oh. Three of them in one month. Wow. And so this part here, these are the sisters. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Illuminated. So it's just like their uh, path to heaven or whatever. It's like climbing Jacob's ladder, yo. Like yeah. But <laughs> well, there's a few more around here, but I don't. I want you to come to the opening in March, so I won't show them all Let's to you. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, you know what? Like a lot of yeah, your yeah. artwork, a lot yeah, of your yeah, artwork yeah. has has like spiritual um, like tones to it. You know, like, like, is that like, I guess I, I'm assuming that's just in, um, intuitive now. Like you just naturally have like, like spiritual, like intentions with, with your artwork. Well, we, I think we're, uh, we're spiritual beings having a physical, physical existence. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Here we go. That's what's up. So Very maybe, true. Maybe that's why you get that vibe. Cause, uh, that's what I believe, you know? Absolutely, absolutely, and 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 it's a blessing that you've um you know using your your gifts in in art, you know like like you mentioned that 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 your mom you know was um was also an artist as well. Yes. And so I assume like you know, like what what was it like growing up in in like an artistic like household? You know, just <laughs> seeing that like. Well, she'd get pissed if I got into her paints. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get That's into her paints a as a kid? But did you get into her paints? Well, they're there. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, when I got older, um, her and I were both in art college at the same time. She went back okay. to school when she was older. That's what's up. So um, I was at OCA in Toronto. Yep. And she was going to Fanshawe uh, College in London at, in their art department. And just by coincidence, Lorraine and her and his, my wife and her were in the same class, but they didn't know who I was. <laughs> she didn't know cool. Lorraine knew me. Lorraine didn't know she knew me. <laughs> wow. A lot uh, of interesting, like, intersections, you know, yeah. of just, like, coincidences. <laughs> yeah. She have seen her when I brought Lorraine over to meet her. Because <laughs> we'd have <laughs> coffee every day together. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. But, uh, very, very powerful. So we would, you know, I, I'd bring my work home to for her to critique, and she'd get me to critique her stuff, you know. So we're a lot alike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, talk about the, the gentleman in the back there with with the. Uh, I don't know if that that's a guitar, or bass guitar. I'm not yeah, sure exactly. It's a, it's it's a lead it's a lead guitar. Okay. And uh, it doesn't really mean anything. Thing except I'm a, he, I'm a guitar player. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I just deep. thought it might have been like like a relative or something. It's or... just decorative. Well, not okay. really decorative. I just want to get the essence of a blues player. That's Jimi Hendrix on his tie. Okay. Here. Yes. Yes. Shout out Jimmy. <laughs> you know, that's, that's another one of my. It's another one of my musicians over there. Okay. I, I just paint them. Uh, just because I, I like the subject matter, there's nothing, uh, there's no deep meaning behind it except uh, I'm a musician and I love music, you mm -hmm. know? Well, you know, the, the, the beauty about um, about art, it's like it's open for interpretation. And mm -hmm. and like I said, like I, I keep going back to like the, the soul element. So even when I look at it, like right at the top, like I, I it feels like like a Detroit or like even like a Louisiana, you know, like, yeah. like New Orleans type of type type of feel. Yeah, I feel like a Chicago vibe. Chicago, even. yes, yeah, yeah. Like like these these places that um that are such rich with with, with our culture, our history, um, our stories, you know. So even if this this um this gentleman is not based off someone in particular, um, I, I still feel it, it it captures like like the essence, you know. It, it's very relatable, you know, and. Yes. And I noticed that a lot of your pieces um kind of kind of have that, you know, because like you're saying, it's the you know, we're spiritual beings having like a physical experience. And you know, it's um it's the way how you're able to capture like the spirit in a in a tangible way. And and to me, like that's like real like artistry. Like that's really what awesome. it's all about. It's to to merge the two worlds, you know, like like it's not just putting some paint together like there's actual like emotions and sometimes like you know like like you know you as you mentioned like you you may get some responses that may trigger people then they may call you racist or you may get some other people who will look at your art and and feel connected and like their stories are being heard you know so yeah um, i uh it's important to me when i uh i create something is is somebody gets a feeling from it even mm -hmm. if it's a, even if it's a shitty film, but like right. my Daddy Hall book, the first part is a whole it's a whole bunch of torture. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and um, that does it, it. A lot of the book is horrific, but um, it it sure got people talking and people thinking about man's inhumanity toward man. Yeah. Well, this kind of reminds me of, of 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 a comment that I saw um, earlier this week, and um, it was talking about like in the states, there's a big topic of like critical race theory, and and people are just like up in awe about like the history that that's you know being um, discussed, and and one comment that really stuck out um, about that because people have different views on in terms of what what information should be left in and what should be left out, and this person just said like, yo, we just want like like a unbiased account of history. And yeah. I thought like that was beautifully said because when you say critical race theory, like it triggers people. They're like, oh, sure. now we're talking about race and this and that, you know. But if we're talking about, you know, a non-biased account of history, like that's simple and plain, that right to the point. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? That would cover it. That covers it, you know. So, so you're now bad me, and you're good and you're bad. And yeah. It's you like, can, let's just get ahead because you're a different color than me and it's all our fault. <laughs> right well it, it, yeah you know and, and again like because a, a lot of like the history is shameful you know and once upon a time you know it, it was it was the way you know it was embedded in law and and i understand how um how how racism or systemic racism ra rather like really works because it's it's literally like woven into like the fabrics of tradition culture and identities so you don't even notice it you know it, it it's there like you know it, and law as well you know like it's, mm -hmm. it's literally embedded in law but as you know time progresses and communities get a little more integrated and educated yeah when we look back at it and we're like what do you mean there is like segregated washrooms and black and white washrooms and you know like black nannies um breastfeeding white babies like like what what like this doesn't make <laughs> yeah, really. it's confusing well, one of the big myths is people are thinking uh, slavery didn't exist in Canada. Speak it on did. it, man. And Talk if, to if me. You escape, if you were a slave and escaped Canada, 
You can't. They cut your friggin' ears off. <laughs> right. First thing you know, they did. And that's, you know, and, and these are important narratives, you know, um, because oftentimes when we think of the Underground Railroad, you know, it's kind of like presented to us like a fairy tale, you know, where it's like there is these, you know, enslaved Africans that follow the North Star from America, the brutal brutality of America and follow the North Star to Canada where they lived happily ever after the end. Yeah. Yeah. And then we don't hear and then and then we don't hear what happened afterwards. It's just like, yeah, it, like well, what, what happened. I'm working on that narrative right now with uh, Negro Creek. Like they're saying that um, I, I've looked at a few history books. Oh, um, the land there was granted to the black people who helped out the British army in 1812. And they're granted all this land. Right. Right. My grandfather had land there. He mm -hmm. didn't work for the British, <laughs> but um, I do know some families that did get land that way. One of the deals was you had to clear so many acres within uh, so many years and pay taxes on it. And if you didn't, they kick it off. Wow. Right? So every single black family that had land on there, they're, they're forced off or kicked off or dragged off or clanned mm. off. <laughs> wow. There's no, nobody has farms there anymore. Black. Yeah. It, it's it's incredible. Like, um, you know, I, I've recently learned about, you know, slavery that, you know, also existed right here in, in Toronto. Um, we even have like a school and a street named, well, there's a few school, streets actually, um, but we have like a, a school and a street um, in particular um, named after families who, who were known for, for having slaves. And that's Jarvis, you know, so we have Jarvis Street and Jarvis Collegiate and, and they were known. And, and what's even the, what's even more fascinating is that if you go to the um the, the Toronto District School Board um Jarvis Collegiate website, it's it's on their website, like you know it, it's all there like documented. So it's, the history is not even like hidden. It's right there in plain sight. Yeah. And you know, so I know that there's a lot of talks of like you know changing the names of of these streets because of what they like represent and and what kind of legacy that we're keeping alive. You know, we know that Ryerson is is now I, I think of what X University or they're coming up with a new name or something like that. Yeah. Um, so so there is like a, a lot of like history that that that's there, and you know it, it's cool to see that we are living in a time of, of change. You yes. know, change is is happening all over and. And something that uh, a metaphor that I always often use is that like, you know, when when we're dealing with change, you know, like we, we kind of have to go through like the pains of, of birth, you know, like in order to bring in new life, we got to go through like birthing pains. And and so like we're, we're bringing in all these different things. And, and I'm so glad that, you know, um, people are, are talking about it uh, more. You know, it's not just like a hush hush kind of like, oh, like. Let's not try to ruffle up any feathers. Let's just, you know, be nice oh, and yeah. grows. And <laughs> I, uh, one year I designed the Emancipation Festival poster. This is like 30 years ago, right? Oh, gosh. So I entered it. I was like, okay, this is perfect. Uh -oh. And uh, it was too uh, fast with chains being snapped on it. And uh, they wouldn't accept it because it was, they thought it was too radical. It might have been. Oh. It might offend people. <laughs> oh, it might offend people. Yeah. <laughs> Emancipation, and you're showing like exactly yeah, that image. Breaking the chain. <laughs> breaking the chain, and that's too radical. Like, like yeah. what? Like the desire for freedom is too radical? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I, I think they thought the fist was saying black power or something, you know? <laughs> well, see, because. Well, it is on sound. <laughs> well well i mean well when you look at the demographics of owen sound which i assume is predominantly white um and you know when when people see like the the black fist and they they associate it with like you know black supremacy but they they associate it in contrast to white supremacy which is two different aspects right because yeah. like white supremacy exists on the you know oppression of of others you know like the, you know, the, the concept of, of like the black fist is really to rise up out of oppression. So like there's two, it, it's not the same category, you know, yeah. like the, there, there's different desires, well, you, know? you know, that, um, I know that, but yeah, yeah. These for are sure. older folk and uh, you don't, don't want to think we're being radical. 
Well, I'm, 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 I've learned that like this type of like mentality and behavior, like I kind of see it as like a mental illness, you know, like yeah. I, I really see it. And, and, you know, like, again, when I study it, it's, it, it's so cleverly woven and I say it over and over again, it's so cleverly woven into tradition, culture and identity to the point where you don't even notice it. I mean, we can talk about like, you know, like Bugs Bunny cartoons back in the day or like little Sambo and, and just like how things were woven into law and, mm -hmm. and just like the, the segregation and all these different things, like, like the last segregated school um, closed in, in Canada was in Nova Scotia in 1984. Like, like what? Yeah. <laughs> like, huh? Unbelievable. You know? So, so again, it's, it's so part of culture. So um, I, I understand how how people are are racist or how people are are conditioned and programmed sure. to be to be racist like um just like for instance my father was the uh, first black man ever hired by Labatsbury mm. and he started there in the, the early 60s mm. and he, he he went through hell because a lot of people didn't think a black man should have a good paying job like that Wow. We go to the light man. And a lot of people treated him like shit. Mm. And then I show up there. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and I don't have the don't get me. My father's a very strong, kind man, and he doesn't take crap from people. Right. But uh, I show up there, I'm a young guy. I hadn't experienced a lot of bullshit like that. And they start that on me. <laughs> And I start telling them exactly what I feel instead of eating my words, right? Okay. And my dad's coming up. Hey, you're causing trouble here. These people are telling me all the stuff you're doing. I go, well, I just told him he was an ignorant, ignorant so-and-so for saying that. And <laughs> 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 he, by then, my, my mentality was different from kids. His, because he was working there trying to support five kids and a wife. And he needed that job. Mm. I didn't need the job and I wouldn't transport anybody. And it was, a 20, it was 20, 30 years later. Right. The world has changed. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> powerful, man. Powerful. So I'm curious to know, like, you know, with, with all your, your artwork, your, your advocacy, um, you know, I guess like, like what, what do you want your, I guess like your legacy to be? I don't know, Neil. I, um, <laughs> do you know what a gruel is? A gruel? I think that's how it's pronounced. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, the history keeper of the African tribes. Mm -hmm. That's kind of it. You know, I want to tell the history of my people and mm. um, through my artwork, mm. you know, of what's going on up here. And, that's why, why, and why, why is that important to you? Um, I think. I kind of feel like my ancestors are calling me to do it. Mm. They've been ignored too long. Mm. You know, like um, I remember um, when I was in my, I, I just started a art school and um, two of my nieces, I won't say which ones, um, okay. they didn't, they didn't realize they were part black, right? Okay. And they were devastated. They were crying and upset and all this stuff. Wait, what do you mean? Like upset that they that they were part black? Like like yeah, <laughs> because okay. they thought about, they thought it was something bad. Go on, continue. And so um, that's when I started telling them our history. Like this is something to be proud of, mm. not ashamed. You know, you come from warriors. Mm. You know, our we come from warriors from all the way from Africa. Every generation, we're fighters. Mm. You know, they weren't subhumans, you know, or, or low lice or second class citizens, you know. Mm. Well, that's what kind of inspired me to do this, this uh, narrative with my work. Mm. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. You know? Indeed. And I, that's I, not... no, no one was around to tell me, you know, when mm. I was a kid. That's amazing. So, so that, that gave you like purpose then, you know, be, because, and, and, and you saw that, um, you know, you, I mean, combining your gifts with, with the knowledge and, and mixing the two and, and seeing the impact, you know, because it's true. Like so many of us have grown up 
in society like not wanting to to be black like i i remember when when it wasn't cool to even associate with africa you know like it, it was a, that was a no-no you know even just being jamaican was already like bad you know but but now we're in a place where we're embracing like all of us you know like all of our history all of our our um our, our combinations of of who we are and uh, um and celebrating that you know yeah. getting rid of the this this um you know vibration of like self-hatred yes and yeah i, I uh you, you nailed it on the head there neil that's exactly uh another one of my purposes because uh I grew up with a lot of self-hatred, you know, mm. um, I was always the only black kid in the school besides my brothers. Mm -hmm. You and, speak on that. Like, what was the impact? Like, don't just, you know, like, what, what was, was that impact? like for you? Yeah. Um, well, psychologically, um, it really, uh, did a number on my self-esteem, okay. but it, it gave me a real passion for, uh, reading and, uh, doing art because <laughs> I didn't mm. associate with anybody. I just read all the time. Why? But uh, it did it did have a, a big impact on my self esteem and not really understanding where uh, my ancestors were from. The gotcha. only uh, uh, when we in school and literature, the only black person we read about was uh, Nigger Jim from Huckleberry Finn. Gosh. <laughs> and, and the teacher got me to stand up as an example of what Nigger Jim might look like. Wow. And then it was Ooh. really horrible. <laughs> what was the impact after that? Horrific. Yeah, man, speak on that. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Okay. So uh, after that day, no respect at all. Mm. Like abuse, you know, physical abuse, mental abuse. From the time I got to school to the time I got home, every day. Mm. No, it was horrific. It's probably one of the worst times of my life. Wow. Yeah, I, I can definitely see how like art is like a means of of like healing for for you um, to like kind of process like all of these, like to really like like transcend and like you know it's almost like alchemy, you know, like taking all this like this pain and and hurt in, into like healing and transformation. Um, I, I can definitely I can definitely like relate to um to like what what you're 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 talking about because um. You know, growing up, like in, in my younger years, like I, I was in French immersion and, you know, again, being like the only like black kid in my class and, you know, feeling like the segregation and, and just like the racism and, and whatnot um, was definitely, you know, like harmful. It definitely, you know, affected my, um, you know, my self-esteem, um, you know, just who I, I felt I, I was. But, um, you know, luckily I found like art. You know, in, in my case, it was really poetry and, and you know, writing like music. And that was my way of like taking all of like the, this pain and just like this, like these like social observations that I was experiencing and putting them in into music. And then, you know, people would recognize that they're like, oh, like I'm I'm talking about a lot of pain, but it's just worded so beautifully <laughs> and that was my way of, of healing. And I'm pretty sure it's similar to you, too. Like, yeah, you know, you're it. I was reading uh, Hemingway's biography, and he said, "Don't whine about that stuff. Use it in your art." <laughs> it's true. He said a little it's more true. eloquently than that, but he was just talking about the, you know, if I'll take all that grief, all that sadness, all that pain, throw it into your work. It's you know? so true. Like there, there's a way that it's just like, like, like how how people like re respond to it, and it it's just um it taps into a different frequency, you know. Like again, it goes back into that spiritual space, you know, where where you're dealing with emotions now, you know. It's much bigger than than words. Like yes, words do invoke the emotions, but like that's really what it is. Is it's having like a spiritual experience. So mm -hmm. most definitely. But um yeah, so I, as we're kind of you know wrapping up um th this session, I'm sure we'll have more conversations to come um you mentioned oh. that you have like like a art um exhibition coming in march man so once you mm -hmm. uh once you sp speak a bit well, to that i'm still uh we're still negotiating it the, the okay. uh, exact date is actually in april okay um it depends I'll, I'll be getting back then and um depends on how long it's going to take me to frame everything and what ann and john are going to decide the date it's that yeah. great. It's that great gallery in um, Home Sound here, and it's uh, yeah. all dealing with uh, with the um, interned in uh, Potter's Field. 
Um, Let's go, man. I'm not doing all 1,500 people, but, but uh, <laughs> I'm picking out some of the interesting stories, like uh, uh, what this one guy, Tate's Williams, he's the first um, man hung in Gray Gallery. He's a black man. Okay. Gray County, I should say. And uh, the ironic part about it was he was blind. And he'd only been married two months, and his wife is living in another town. And they accused him of poisoning her. Oh, gosh. Said, How can I go 30 miles as a blind man and poison her? <sighs> They've only been married to her two months. Anyways, he got found guilty. Oh, gosh. And he was the first person to hang there. Wow. I'm working on his portrait right now. And uh, he's in there on Mark Grave. And wow. uh, two months later, his uh, mother-in-law confessed that she killed her own daughter. And it wasn't him. <sighs> oh, man. But anyways, those are just some of the characters I'm discovering. And uh, mm. I think that Nor Normie Norquay, she's associate professor at North York. She's been doing studies on this and giving me some hints on it. <laughs> wow. But I'll, I'll have... There'll be little statements beside each image to tell you the story behind the painting. Mm, mm. Wow. I mean, it, it's crazy. And this is all Canada, you know, like this, mm -hmm. this isn't, this isn't Savannah, Georgia, <laughs> you know, this is, this is right here in, in Ontario. And, um, you know, something that, that comes to mind, like I, I saw this meme the other day and I was talking about like, um, ancestral, like mathematics. And it was basically showing that um like how many ancestors it took for us to exist in this like being like right now like you as an individual like you know you have like two parents and then they have two parents and so forth and it just kept going 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 until it was showing like like two thousand people you know over like a series of generations um that it took in order for you to exist in this present moment right now wow so you know that's something that i always reflect on and to know that we are here on purpose you know it's not by accident um, everything that that we're doing is right on schedule, you know. So when you talk about like you feel your ancestors and whatnot, it's like yeah, that's because you're also part of them too, right? Because remember, yeah. we're spiritual beings having a physical experience, so that connection has never never left. You know, it's the past, present, future, all in one timeline. You know, like like oh, yeah. you like we we are literally like the past, present, and future, like all in one, you know, I, that might go over the heads of, of some people's, but I know you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Well, you know, know, next time you're up here, uh, I gotta go show you Negro Creek. Let's go, man. Yeah. Let's go. Um, people keep- and Just to be over. clear, hold yeah. on, just to be clear, the original name was Nigger Creek. Let's just be clear, part of my language. I, I usually don't use that word, but in the context um, of that's like, what I've been, history- That's what I've been told, and I, I've seen okay. it written down places, but I haven't actually seen it on a document. You know? Well, I, I've I've heard of it too, and I've heard of like other places, you know, um, in in Canada, and you know, it, it's not unlikely, you know, um, a lot of things. <laughs> I, think, really, I think it's highly unlikely. High, it's, it, it's highly uh, unlikely, you know, because again, like these were the times, and yeah. and these were were common languages and and practices. Now it, it's ridiculous because you know we have more intelligence and a little more empathy and compassion, um, yeah. and we're, we're connected more on a human level nowadays. That's why they're <laughs> yeah. trying to change the name. Right. I'm going to call it Moog, Moogie, turn it, change it to Moogie Line. And my uh, great aunts and uncles all start protesting because they they didn't want that black history to be erased. Yeah, yeah. This so keep this, the negro instead of disappear altogether. Right, and and th this goes back to what I was saying about you know we just want like like you know an unbiased account of of history because these are like you know teaching tools. This kind of just to just to kind of like continue off of this um in in mm -hmm. detroit there is um you know a, a museum called the 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 uh the jim crow <laughs> museum of racist memorabilia i don't know if you heard of it yeah i have i've been there you know <laughs> i actually been been to the jim crow museum of racist memorabilia and i know that a lot of people would go in there and just have a fit like you'd be upset but I, I enjoyed it because I saw this as like, you know, educational resources and uh, an accurate historical depiction of the times and really just showing how 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 racism is woven into systems, woven into tra traditions, woven into culture and identity. And when you see like the amount of like memorabilia, these figurines and, and, and caricatures and 
all these different things that were used to justify um, the treatment of black people. Like it, it makes sense. I understand why people are racist and how they're conditioned. It, it's absolutely yeah. um, incredible. And I don't believe in erasing it. We, we need these references so that we don't repeat it again. We, sure. we need to see this. Yeah. I agree. And uh, I think people aren't born racist. They're taught, <laughs> you know, 1000%, 1000%. Mm. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> That's what's up. So uh, we're, we're going to leave, leave everybody like that, man. We're just going to continue, you know, carrying this torch, um, and creating these educational resources, you know, making sure that, you know, we're rooted in, in humanity. You know, this is exactly what we're all about. And, um, and yo, like know that our ancestors are, are with us. And, and what's the, to me, what what's the most beautiful aspect of this is like the works that we're doing right now will, you know, exceed our, our physical existence. Yeah. You know? And, and I think that's one of the, the, the coolest things, you know, there's going to be people who may look at this interview, I don't know, 20 years from now and to be like, okay, I'm going to pick up the torch right now, you know? So, yeah. so th this is what I mean by past, present and future. You know what I mean? Like we're already speaking it into existence and I just salute you. And um, we're definitely going to connect, you know, when I come out to Owen sound, so I want to thank you for um for you know taking this moment right now. And this is like my first um reason with logic podcast, like live. I actually have a few interviews that I have backed up that I'm going to be releasing real soon. So this is kind of like the soft launch of like my personal podcast. Oh, wow. Um people who follow me know I have a few different podcasts, but this is like my personal one. So oh. um so this is like the inaugural one. So you're kind of like setting it off and um next uh -oh. couple of weeks <laughs> another one. So well, you know, I uh, I actually when I was talking to you, I forgot that we're even uh anybody else is even watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it was just me and you talking. Oh, well, actually, my apologies. There's actually quite a bit of comments that I am going to um scroll back. So one uh um you know um viewer mentioned uh, to me saying um, that I nailed it with uh, this, uh, the, the distinctions uh, perfectly. I assume when I was talking about, um, you know, I guess like white supremacy, black supremacy and whatnot. Um, another Facebook user said uh, Grio. So that's like the name of um, what, what you're, you're talking about, the African griots. Um, another person said uh, those Owen Sound settlers were the first loggers in the area. So there's a lot more history um, to, to build on. Another user said... Um, um, I understand the escape, healing, and empowerment in art, gentlemen. Thumbs up. Big up, big up. Um, someone mentioned, uh, I can't see the names. of. It just says Facebook user, so forgive me if I'm not seeing your name. That's okay. Um, it says, Tony, Tony um, I, I believe I, I met you. Um, I, I met a couple of, okay, sorry. Tony, I believe I met a couple of folks, your relatives, named Miller, when I lived in Collingwood. Very much possible. I'm pretty sure you got yeah. family out there. We have a lot of them. Uh, Yep. Uh, Tony uh, said, this other user says, Tony, I look forward uh, to you writing about William Luke, especially since a hero like him should be taught about and celebrated in Ontario. Uh, Shay, that's exactly it. Um, another user said, agree, Neil. Um, history um, definitely is a teaching tool. Absolutely. You know, again, we just want non-biased accounts of history. Just, For sure. just put the truth in the middle and step back. Don't touch yes. it. <laughs> that's it <laughs> the truth needs no cosign just let it stand by itself okay you know yeah. and then and then we have colleen out here saying uh thank you for educating me and your time tonight another user says uh tony re william luke um i mean oh the writing and the painting about him so yeah there's going to be i'm pretty sure that these paintings will will create writings you know and again that's the beauty about art we never know where it's going to go so that's what's up. Um, so the user says, uh, it's me, uh, Gordon Beckles. Ha ha. <laughs> so I guess uh, that's uh, a friend of yours. Um, and then we have Rob says, thanks for this. Um, watched a video last night where Tony Morrison made the same points Tony made tonight. So that's all we're doing, man. You know, um, we're, we're, we're living, we're existing on purpose. We all have stories and our stories need to be told. And, you know, we're just going to continue to empower each other um, today tomorrow and beyond <laughs> <laughs> sounds good so, you know i'm gonna leave you all like that man so thank everyone for joining for my, my my first um you know reason with logic podcast live um look out for some um other interviews that i'm going to be um sharing that i have pre-recorded i got about like six of them so i'm thinking i might just release them all together um because they're pre-recorded and then i may re-invite uh the people that i interviewed to have a live 
um, kind of follow up, you know. So um, once again, I just want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Tony um, for for coming through and sharing his expertise. I'm glad that I got like the burning bush in the back there. <laughs> you know, um, I get a lot of compliments. My kids love it. They love the colors and it brings so much energy. It's very like psychedelic and brings out a lot of kind of stuff, you know. So I'm very pleased, Bill. Yes, I, I, I thank you for that. So um, so we're going to sign off like that, man, until next time, yo. So we'll be in touch. Okay, bye. And we are out, man. Peace. <laughs>